Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The new Marvel Legends Ursa Major Wave is starting to hit stores, and this is one assortment that I've been really really excited for. Truth be told, I wasn't looking for all the figures in the wave, but I was able to find the ones I was looking for, and there's no figure in the wave that I'm more excited about than the modular Iron Man. Starting off with the packaging, and we can see a nice big window that shows us what we're getting. Iron Man logo down here, and then another one spot varnished at the top. We can see that this is the Ursa Major Wave. We also have some nice classic artwork on the side, and we can see the full image on the back. From the looks of it, this seems to be actual artwork from the comics. Usually they do their own in-house artwork, but I gotta tell you, I kinda like this better. A dazzling technological achievement, the modular suit allows Tony Stark to reconfigure subsystems like boots, gloves, helmets, and scanners on the fly. To build a figure for this series is Ursa Major, no doubt inspired by the Build-A-Bear joke that Iron Man made in Avengers Endgame. In addition to this figure, the wave also includes the Vault Guardsman, Stealth Iron Man, Dark Star, Iron Heart, Hologram Iron Man, and Ultron. And for those who are interested, here's the barcode. Getting Tony out of that box, we can see some really cool line work on the insert tray. If you look closely, you can see that it's an Iron Man schematic made out of circuitry. A great box for what already looks to be a great figure for packaging. I'm giving the modular Iron Man one whole point. Moving on to presentation, and Iron Man stands at six and a half inches. Starting off with the head, and this is a completely new sculpt. We have the gold face plate and some of that line work etched into the top of his helmet. Some Iron Man ears. We have that line work in his neck, similar to the 80s look. As we move down the torso, we can see this sort of separation between the red and the gold. This is one of the main things that makes the modular armor stand out. One thing I'm not terribly crazy about is that they chose to cast this in a red marbleized plastic. I don't mind the marbleization, but if you look closely, none of the reds really match. That being said, once you've got it on your shelf and you step back, it does all come together. Moving down the arm, we can see that these are pinless joints. Forearm is a bit bulgy and awkward though. And when we jump down to the knees, we can see that they're pinless also. Speaking of articulation, they also did a good job of putting the side panel completely on the bottom thigh. That way it doesn't interfere with articulation. They also did a good job of integrating this boot cut. But this isn't about posability, it's about presentation. And for presentation, this Iron Man gets one whole point. Moving on to posability, and I actually want to take a moment to show you what's going on under here. As you can see, this is a typical ball hinge. It goes forward and back like so, but similar to the red skull, there's a separate joint at the base of the neck. This gives him a little bit extra back, and a little bit extra forward, and a little bit extra side to side. His arms raise up 90 degrees, and the joint is a little bit stiff, but it does turn all the way around. Bicep swivel, and as I've already pointed out, pinless double jointed knees. They've also gone the extra mile and finally added a hinge to the blast effect hand. Great arch back with the ab crunch, and a really good hunch forward, and then all the way around. Ball jointed hips spread out that, wow, that is a perfect split. Bless the soul, if Glenn Webb was still with us, he would be very, very impressed. As I already showed you, we have a thigh cut here, pinless double jointed knees, boot cut, and all the ankle things. What I appreciate about this figure isn't just how poseable it is, it's also about the innovations that we're seeing in that poseability. The added neck and wrist articulation is great, and seeing more pinless joints is very much welcome. For poseability, I'm giving Iron Man one whole point. Moving on to playability, and Iron Man comes with these blast effects that we're pretty used to by now. They plug easily into the hands, and also the feet. And if you have the Deluxe War Machine, you can also mix and match with his blast-off effects. And in addition to blast effects, Iron Man also comes with these fists. But playability is more than just accessories, it's also about how well your figure plays with others. So here he is alongside some other marvelous 90s heroes. We've got Black Widow, Thunderstrike, Daredevil, and Spider-Man. Here he is alongside the 80 years Iron Man. There are differences in the reds and golds that they used, but overall, these two figures go very well together. For another 90s Iron Man comparison, here he is alongside the Heroes Reborn Iron Man from Toy Biz. And for a fun tribute to the 90s animated series, here's Iron Man alongside MODOK, Spider-Woman, and War Machine. Sadly, I don't have Hawkeye and Vision, but if you saw my Top 10 White Whales video, you would already know that. And for some other villains, here he is alongside Kang, Red Skull, and Thanos. Man, this has been a good year for villains. For a 90s DC comparison, here he is with the Superman Red and Superman Blue by Hasbro. This was part of their short 
short-lived DC Superheroes line. And of course, we have Superboy from Mattel's DC Universe Classics. And lastly, here he is alongside the original figure by Toy Biz. For those of you who aren't familiar with this line, the holes in his chest were to plug in some extra armor accessories. Trying to round out a 90s assortment of Avengers, or just taking a trip down memory lane, this Iron Man will be everything you're looking for and more. An extra Tony Stark head rocking his 90s era mullet would have really set this thing over the top, but I'm more than happy with everything that we got. For playability, I'm giving Iron Man one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price, and that will require a little bit of story time. I was so eager for this wave that I actually pre-ordered the ones that I wanted from Big Bad Toy Store. They were $22.99 each, and of course would have included shipping and handling. Lo and behold, I found them at Walmart for the same exact price before my pre-order was fulfilled, so I canceled that pre-order and got them there. I figured, hey, they're right here, and I could save a few bucks on shipping and handling. After I left Walmart, I went over to Target looking for some other figures, and wouldn't you know it, they had this wave also. The difference? Target was still selling them for $19.99. And so I bought them again, and then returned the other ones to Walmart so I could make back the difference. Long story short, if you can, I highly recommend trying to find them at Target, but even if you can't, I do think that this Iron Man is well worth it. For price, I'm giving Iron Man one whole point for a grand total of 5 out of 5. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Marvel Legends Ursa Major Wave Modular Suit Iron Man. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.